Hello, welcome back to my farmhouse sewing room. I'm Arne, and today I would like to share a really fun, scrappy idea with you today. So today it's all about chicken coasters. I know I'm a little chicken obsessed because I just became a new chicken mommy. Um, if you haven't seen my video yet of the baby chicks that we just got, um, um, check it out. They're, they're really cute and they're really sweet and I would like to try to keep you updated on, on how they grow. But anyway, today I want to show you how to make some funky little chicken coasters. Um, I have a whole pile of these and I'm going to be putting these on my Etsy store, Farmhouse by Marnay. So if you'd like to check them out, these are just fun. They're created totally from scraps, some ribbon and a little creativity so I'm gonna show you what I made I made four of this color and then I did four of this color just some really um, simple scrappy ideas and then all the rest I did sets of two so I did a brown with the colorful tails and the colorful wings I wanted to make one in every color because like I said, I'm a little chicken obsessed, <laughs> but these are really fun. You can put them anywhere. You can throw them in the washer when they get dirty, you know, and put your coffee cup or your drink or whatever on them. They're just really cute. Uh, I really like this one. This would be great at Christmas time or a cabin-y kind of feel. I have a couple of these on my nightstands in my bedroom because I just think they're really cool. Here's a pink plaid. And I have like a blue and greenish color plaid. And I do have some wiggly eyes that I put on, on mine in my room. And I might put a little eye on these in the, in the magazine that I found these in. They had little buttons for eyes. So you can see I have a whole pile of 24 little chicken coasters. And I will probably be selling them in sets of two with the colors and then the sets of four which I only have two sets of four. So if you're interested, you can check them out on, on my Etsy store. So I'm really um, gonna show you how you can do this yourself without a pattern. I have this magazine that I got from my friend, um, my neighbor, and um, it's an old magazine from 2020. And it is, um, what magazine was this? It's a quilter's world. And I believe it was a springtime 2020. So that's kind of old. And when I went through it, I just love this idea of making these little chicken coasters that you can put your drink on or your coffee cup. Um, and I do ha have the pattern that I cut out of this book, but it's so simple. And I thought anybody could do this. All you need to do is, you know, have a little creativity. So I'm gonna show you how we do it. So I took a piece of paper and this is a six inch by four and a half. And really all you gotta do is fold it in half. and. I drew a little line here in the corner so you could kind of curve it off. So you will get this shape of, you know, for the body of your chicken coaster. And then the same way I did for the wing, I kind of, I kind of drawed, and I know you can do this. I kind of drawed this little straight line with, you know, with a little curve underneath it. And then I just kind of went in and made a couple of little curves to make a wing. And you can put these in either either direction you, you want, it just depends. So when I got my wing cut out, this is kind of how it looks. So I, and you can kind of curve it up. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to look exactly, you know, like the book or like mine. Um, it's just a little creativity, make a little wing, you know, and, and put it in there. And I appliqued my wings on. So I used a little heat and bond and then I bonded these on to the front of my, my pattern. And then I did like a little um, applique stitch all the way around it. I did that first before I put my coaster together. So um, I'm gonna walk you through and how I do this too, because it's really simple, they're really fun. And it's just a really whimsical thing to have lying around, you know, to put your cup on it. And like I said, if they get dirty, throw them in the washer. They're all cloth, you know? And it's a great way to use up little pieces and just have some fun. So we've got um, the beak. The beak, you're basically going to make kind of like a triangle. And the beak really is, is a straight line out. And then it kind of, you make this little tip where it's not a point. Um, and then I kind of angled the line down so you can kind of see my little beak. And it makes these long, fun little beaks, you know. But you can make them as short as you want. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Just make them fun, you know. And then the ribbon. Um, the ribbon, you can use any kind of ribbon you want. Um, I stuck with red, but I, 
I have some uh, red with these black dots on it. This is really fun too. Um, I use the red for the comb and then whatever color I choose for my body, I try to get um, like matching ribbons to put in with a tail and I'll give you the measurements of them. So really I've got some pieces already cut out. I've got my, my body and my wing and a beak. And the beak is about, I made mine about two inches long and then I just kind of draw the line down. So, I mean, it's not real technical, just, you know, kind of like a, a like a triangle, but it has the, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what kind of shape you would call this, but just make it as fun as you want. And same way with the wing, you know, you're just kind of making a curve and then making the, you know, like a little wing shape or however you want to do it. And the body is just really easy. The body, um, was a five inch by six inch. And like I said, I just folded it in half like I did this paper and I draw a line and then you would just cut along that line and it would give you this shape when you open it up. So really simple, don't overthink it. Um, just, just have some fun with it. So um, I've got some fabrics here already that I want to do. I want to make a couple little chicken coasters here for my farmhouse sewing room. So I had a couple of pieces of this um, sewing notion fabric and there was only a, a, like two of these long. So I cut it in half and I trimmed it up. So I, I'm going to make two. So this is going to be my main body and um, I'm going to cut out my body shape. And then on the back, on the back of these that I made, I put muslin on the back of all of them because I have a ton of muslin and I have muslin scraps and I thought the backside you really don't see. And every set I used my machine to um, embroider Farmhouse by Marnay on there. My, my machine does letter. So I just thought that was a nice touch to, to put on my coasters. But the back of these coasters, I found this lovely little matching kind of fabric that goes with my little notion fabric. So I'm gonna make the backsides of these ones kind of pretty. And then the wings for my body, I'm gonna do the wings in the same as the back fabric. And then I got some yellow here to, to draw up my beaks. And then I've got some scrap batting. And I have a lot of scrap batting because I'm a quilter. So I save all my little batting pieces because they're great for, you know, a lot of little things. Projects like this, it's perfect. I just trimmed them up and I will just cut them out. So um, I think now um, I should get the pieces, the pieces cut out. So I'm going to move you down. And I'm going to show you how I cut these out because I have my paper templates. And really what I'm going to do is lay my paper template on the back side of my fabrics. And I'm going to draw it with a little fine point Sharpie and um, just trace them out. And then I will cut them out and then we will start to layer them together. So I'm just going to go over real quick and show you step by step. You can do this at home. These are just so fun, you know. And if you like chickens as much as I do, it's just a really fun project or it's a fun thing to give to someone as well. So I think I'm going to use the back side of my backs because this is lighter and this fabric is dark and I don't know if my pen will show up very good so I can layer my back with my top and cut them in my batting and cut them all out at the same time. So um, I'm going to move you down and I'll let you watch me kind of trace this out and hopefully I won't lose my Okay, so I've got my pattern here and it fits very nicely onto this piece of fabric that I cut out. And like I said, my square is six inches by four and a half, which my body lays very nicely on there. So really all I have to worry about is getting around my corners. But I'm going to draw mine out. And you can do this however you want to do it. They don't have to be perfect. So, and I've got these little pattern weights and I can set them on there because they give me an extra hand on, to make my lines on here. So I'm just gonna kind of go around my paper with my fine point pen. And I'm just gonna kind of draw a line my pattern weight over there so I can kind of keep it in line. They don't have to be perfect, but I want to be close. So, and there I have my chicken body all drawn out. And then I can lay that right on top of this fabric and I can cut that out in that line 
as well as put my batting on there too. And then I can cut out all three pieces at one time. So I'm gonna set them aside and we're gonna do that with um, both of those, but I'll do that off camera. So um, here is a piece of fabric and it's just kind of a long strip. So, and this little strip was about two inches, two inches wide. And then I made it long enough so I could lay two of my beak pieces because I'm gonna need two pieces. And I generally just put the pretty sides together so I can have two pieces for my beak and I'm just gonna draw them out. And, um, and I will cut them out as well. So I'm gonna do two coasters. So I'm gonna need two beaks. I don't get my thing in the way. And like I said, if you're not perfect, don't worry about it. This is just a rough, rough drawing. I can cut a straight line, <laughs> so it's not too hard. And like I said, you know, you can um, get as creative as you want with these. You could probably even use felt. The ideas are really endless. It's just all on how you want to do things. Because I thought about doing this with some yellow felt. But since I am, have an overflowing amount of scraps, I just, you know, prefer to use up my scraps. And let's see. I want to find the wrong sides of this fabric. Which I think that's the wrong side. Now I'm just going to layer these together. And um, I will put my wing on here. And my wing was, I made about two inches high by three inches wide so you can see my wing template fits on there pretty good so if you had made a square that size and then just kind of you know draw the curves in your wing you would you know that would be the perfect size for the body so like I said it's just you know drawing a few curves you can make your chicken as whimsical as you want it's fun to make them with different colors and patterns and just see how they turned out. Because I started off, I made my the ones from my bedroom first. And I thought, oh my god, these are so cute. I wanted to make more. So then I made some black sets. Like I have this one here for my coffee cup. You know, and I kind of put put my cup on there. So, and, you know, so they hold a pretty good sized cup. Just really cute, you know. And I just love to have them... It's not good for me to set a hot coffee cup on my mat, so I like to have coasters in my in my room here. So, so there's my wing. So I'm gonna cut these out, and then um, we will get on to the next step. Okay, I just want to show you. Um, I heat and bond my wings on. So I drew out around the pattern with my little fine line uh, sharpie marker, and it kind of shows through the paper, so I can see the outline. But when I um, peel off the paper and I stick this to my main body and I stitch around it, you're not going to see that black line, but it just gives me an outline to cut it on. So you can see I've got the paper on there and I did it with both of them. So um, I'm just going to cut those out. I've got the bodies, the batting, and the back cut out. So this is our, is our, is our shape. And I did that with two and then I've got the beaks all cut out. And I have the wrong, the pretty sides on the inside and the wrong sides out. So I will um, sew these down. So I'm going to go over and I'll show you how I sew these together and how we put these together and how simple they are. But um, first of all, I'm going to cut these wings out and I'm going to position them somewhere in the middle of my my little birdie or my chicken, I should say. I'm very my chicken. And I'm going to put it like right in the middle. And you can kind of figure out where you want your little wing to be. And then we will, um, after I get these cut out, I'll get on and um, give you the measurements of the ribbon, how to cut that out and how to place it. And um, we will start putting these together. They only take minutes. The, the longest time is just is just getting the prep, but really it's it doesn't take that long, especially if you have more than one hand. So anyway, um, let me get these cut out and we'll get on to the next step. All right, I've got you positioned on my machine. So hopefully you can kind of see how I'm gonna do this. So this is like the raw edges and it's already um, heat and bond on. And I have my batting underneath my um, main piece of fabric because when I stitch the wing down, it's gonna help hold the batting in position too so it won't go anywhere when I put the back on. So um, I'm just gonna kinda put this on my machine and I am just going to um, 
stitch this down with like a blanket stitch. And what I love about my machine is I can just hit my foot pedal and my presser foot drops down. And when I stop, it automatically comes up so I can position around the curve. That's why I love this machine. It is so great for me. It's like it was made for me. <laughs> this machine was money well spent. I love it. It is the Hustavarna Opal 690Q. If any of you have one of these machines, you know what I'm talking about. This machine is great. I've had a Singer sewing machine before this, and honestly, I hated it. I mean, I thought it was a great machine because it uh, had great reviews, but it just did not do well with me. And if you want to see a grown woman cry, I had a complete meltdown over that machine. So I had it serviced, and I was going to sell it, and my mother wanted it. She bought it, and she loves it. And I thought, great for her. Um, it works out, but for me, it just was not a good match. This machine, I love it, and it just works so beautifully. I love the stitches on it. And it just makes it very, it, like, it makes my life very easy. And I can move around this thing pretty quickly. Get my thread out of the way. And I love to just go around these curves. this right out. Right back to the beginning. And I might just put a little back stitch on there just because I can and it secures it. And cut my thread. Oops, wrong one. Okay. So my wing is on and I'm going to clip my thread and I'm going to change my position back to a straight stitch and you can kind of see how that kind of quilted that wing onto the batting. So the batting's not going to move inside this coaster, especially if you wash it, uh, which really makes it nice. So now I've got my wing pieces and I'm going to reset my machine to a straight, straight stitch and I will show you how we um, flip these around. So I'm going to get back to the straight stitch. A little sewing advisor it's just very very nice so and I use a quarter inch seam allowance with this I've really gotten to that quarter inch seam allowance it makes it really easy and I pretty much know where it is on this machine and you don't have to back stitch because this is going to get sewed into the seam so I'm just going to kind of go down almost all the way to the edge I'm going to turn it and do about three stitches and then just turn it, angle it back up. Because my beak is on a slight angle. It has a straight line and then a slight angle. And sew it all the way out. And then this one I can kind of put in right behind it and just sew it on. And these don't have to be perfect, so if you don't get it just so, don't sweat it. These are fun. And the more quirky it looks, the better, I think. So, you're just doing something for fun. And I just thought these were so stinking cute that I just had to make one in every color. And why not make one for a sewing room? So, all right, let's get this back up here. I'm going to cut these apart. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I guess you can. I'm not too good with this camera stuff, but I'm trying to give you the idea of how I do things and how it's done at the same time, if that makes any sense. So I get all these little threads and I can throw them in my thread catcher and then I just need to clip them apart. Okay, so I've got one of these little tools, one of these little pokey things, and maybe I can kind of show you how I do this, make sure. Let you see. Okay, I, I use my lap for everything, so. But I'm gonna try to um, get my finger into the inside, and then I'm gonna just kind of try to manip manipulate it, <laughs> so I can get the outside to the in and kind of. I got it started, so now I've got me a wad here, and I'll take my little poker 
thing and try to um, poke it, poke my beak out without um, puncturing my fabric because you don't want to, you don't want to poke it through your fabric. You just want to gently push. Um, I also have a long stick that I got in the stuffing bag. Sometimes this helps too to push out points, so I might use either one. But I do like this little um, plastic poker because it has a nice little point on it. And if I'm gentle enough, I can get my my beak out and make a nice. Um... And usually I'll I'll trim around the ends here, but it's, you don't have to. I mean, I try to take off some of the hard corners here a little bit, but I didn't do it on this one. But it still poked out really nice. So I like the straight stitch for across the top, and then the bottom part I I like the angle angle down but you you pick however you want it to look you know it's just a preference thing but this is how it looked in the magazine so I kind of stayed true to the magazine but your beat can be as quirky as you want it to as short as you want to or as long as you want it I mean it's just I don't know I just think it looks really cute and whimsical and I just love it so I'm just going to manipulate that around so I can at least try to poke it through and I'm sure you'll have better luck if you have all ten, <laughs> 10 fingers. I only have five, so this is just how I do it. So I got it in a wad. Get my poker thing in there, and then I can um, kind of gently poke it out to get it to look like a chicken beak. I like these long beaks. I just think they look cute. Just a fun little chicken. You know anybody that loves chickens, these make great gifts. So I think that looks pretty good. And then I just want to make sure it's, oop, I want to be careful because I really don't want to poke my beak out. But not that anything, this is really just for looks, so I think it looks pretty good. So, okay, now I'm going to get back up here by the machine and I will show you how we're going to do this. So I got my, my main body. And I've got my ribbons, and I've got everything separated. And I've already did the other body here. I've got I've got that all sewed down, so that one's all ready. So we're gonna start with this one. Now my wing, the tip of my wing. Now my other chickens, my tip of my wing was on this side. So if you have a preference on which way you want your beak to show, but my chicken is gonna be facing this way, so his beak is gonna be coming out here, and I want that straight part up. So I know I want that, and so I'm gonna hang it aim his point in because when I turn this right side out the beak will come out but before I do the beak I want to do the comb so I'm trying to figure out how I like to sew this this is how I do it because it, I can steady it so I go about a half inch away from the edge so I want a half inch in from that corner and then my long piece first and then my I'm going to butt my shorter piece right up next to it. And to actually hold these in position, I just kind of sew these edges down real, real close to the edge. And I want to be careful that one doesn't flip up and get caught in my foot. Just so that I, I want to stay stitch them. I guess that's what you would call this is a stay stitch. And that holds them in place for me. So now, after I cut my thread, I can go back. And of course, let me get this little thread off there because I hate extra threads in the way. And of course, it's hooked on the back. I, I don't like all these threads, so I just want to clip them off first and get rid of those. So now I've got these two pieces of ribbon. So the long one, now I can take this up and, and make sure it, it lines up and it's to the edge. And I will just um, stitch it very close to the edge. And this is going to get lost in the seam when I put the back on it. And then my presser foot lifts up a little bit. So now I can fold this one up and set it in there. And I don't have to get my fingers in the way because I've sewed my finger before and that is no fun. So I take all precautions. So there, I have the comb on. So when I sew the back to this and you turn it right side out, that those will stand up. But right now you want everything to lay down to the inside because we're going to sew a back onto this and it's going to have a seam all the way around. 
So now I am going to attach one of my beaks. And like I said, I want that straight. I don't want the angle side up because that way his, that's going to make his beak look like it's aiming down. And I don't want it to aim down. So I want that straight part to go out. But I'm going to put the raw edge to the raw edge. And I'm going to do about the same thing. About a half inch down from the corner. Or maybe just a little bit lower. Maybe three quarters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew that beak on very close to the raw edge. Just to kind of hold it in place until I get my back sewed on. I don't want it to be sewed in a quarter of an inch. I just want it sewed close to the edge so it just stays in place. So when I do put my back on, nothing's going to move. So there's my beak. And the thread's in the way. So now we're going to get ready for the tail feathers. I'm going to set that beak aside. My tail feathers are this ones. So my longest one... And if you've got a pretty side to your ribbon, you want the pretty side down. I didn't mention that on my, on these, yeah. So when I stay stitch it, I'm going to make it like a half an inch from the corner. And I'm going to lay the, lo the longest one pretty side down first. And then I'm going to lay the middle one, which is two and a half. So this is the three inch on the top, the two and a half. And I'm just going to butt them up to each other. So the ends are to the raw edge of my, my chicken body. And then I'm going to put the two inch one on the last. And then I'm going to kind of hold them with my fingers and not get my fingers in the way. And just so stitch them down just like I did the comb so that they stay in place when I fold them over. And I try to use my fingers to hold them, hold them into position. And it seems like I would always get them loppy or I don't know. This just works for me, but you could do it however, what works for you. I'm just um, showing you what works for me because I like everything to be held in place because I am single-handed and it's just easier. So I want that thread there. I don't want that hanging on there. So I'm going to cut that off. Now I'm going to take the longest one first and fold it over. And now you'll see the pretty sides. And I'm going to get real close to the edge and just kind of stitch it in place. And I'll just do a couple stitches. And then I'll take the second one and butt that up and put it in place so all my edges will line up my ribbons will lay nicely over top of each other in position and then I will do the last one the shortest one and sew it close to the edge and I got it all lined up and that will just hold them in position so now as you can see my tail feathers, my beak, and my comb are all nicely tucked inside, so they're out of the way. And now I'm going to get one of my backs, and I'm going to want to make sure, get them loose threads off there, that the pretty side is to the pretty side. So this is the pretty side. I know this is a very light fabric, and it's very thin, but this is my pretty side, and I want my pretty side to the pretty. So I'm going to lay that right over top. And if you want, you can pin this. I don't pin because this is such a small thing. I don't feel like I need to pin it. So I'm going to start at the top, at the flat side. And I'm going to kind of um, start close to the edge. And I'm going to do a quarter inch seam. And I keep my ne needle in the down position. So when I get to the quarter inch from the edge here, my needle is down. And then I can turn it. And I like to try to keep my quarter inch seam consistent and really I just want to make sure this kind of stays in place and sew it a quarter inch all the way around just want to keep on track here and make sure nothing gets pinched Everything is nicely tucked in, and I don't want to pull on my fabric because I don't want to stretch it, which is easy to do. I just want everything to kind of stay together, sandwiched. And I'm going to get up here to the top. And one more stitch. And then I'm going to turn. And I'm going to leave a hole right here at the top because this is my straight straight piece. And I probably should have backstitched when I started, but that's okay. I just want to, I'm going to backstitch at this one, but I should have done a backstitch when I started too, because that will help hold my stitches when I flip it. 
but after I flip it, we're gonna straighten it out and we're going to top stitch it. So I've sewed it all the way around and you can kind of see. And if you want, you can take some pinking shears and go around this and clip it if you want to. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Um, it really doesn't, it really, I can't really say it doesn't matter, but um, on mine, it hasn't really, um, it hasn't really bunched up when I didn't clip the, the curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip it. Although I do like to, tr to trim out, I need to let you watch me how I do this. I like to trim off the corners right here, being careful not to, to cut your stitches, which I probably shouldn't do it with this. I should get a regular pair of scissors, but I'm just trying to show you quick because my scissors are over there. So I just kind of clip the corners to take to take off that bulk on each of my corners. So I got my little hole here, and really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my fingers in there, and I'm going to take my thumb and push it, push it through. So you'll kind of see this really it will come to life. Um, like a chicken being born <laughs> uh, so I gotta use my knees a lot but I just want to pull up my um, ribbons make sure they're all in position and I can even use my stick here to kind of go in the hole and just um, push around the curves very gently I don't want to poke any holes in it but um, I just want to kind of go around and I like to poke out those um those corners a little bit just to it makes my tail feathers lay nice and straight and also my beak up here let me get my stick back in there and I'll just kind of poke out that corner and then the top here your fabric will want to fold in and um, when you get ready to top stitch this around it'll close that hole up so I will press this on my um, sewing machine. So isn't he cute? Oh my gosh, it's a sewing chick. <laughs> Cause we're all sewing chicks, you know. Well, there are some guys out there that sew, so we can have some roosters in the in the hen house, <laughs> so to speak. I don't know. I'm being funny, <laughs> silly, funny, haha. <laughs> I don't know. I love chickens. <laughs> I'm a farm girl. Anybody that knows me. I am a farmer's daughter. I love my animals. I love my farmhouse. And I love making chickens. <laughs> so, um, I think I will press this with my iron. And then I'm going to go around and we'll top stitch it. So, okay. So, um, let's go over here. We're almost done. I'm just going to top stitch this around. So you might as well watch me press. Oh, enjoy the scenic view <laughs> as I move around here. Let me see my ironing table. All right. Can you see? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'm just going to kind of tuck this top in that seam. So everything kind of lays together. And I'm kind of a perfectionist with some of that because I... When I top stitch this around, I want to make sure it's folded in enough so when I stitch that very close to the edge, it's going to catch all of that and close it up. And I don't want to take the iron and go over my ribbon because the ribbon is kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's kind of silky. I don't know. I don't want to melt it or anything. So, And I don't know how these would wash in a dryer or anything, but um, if you do wash them, um, you could just um, let them air dry. I don't know how the... The ribbon will hold up in a dryer. I haven't washed any of mine yet, but it's something to think about. So I'm just kind of straightening his tail feathers. My iron should be, my iron's not quite that hot yet, but I just want to press that seam and make sure that it lays nice and flat. So when I stitch it around, you know, it, it closes up because I really don't want a hole there. And if you do end up with a hole there, you can always get some of um, liquid stitch or some of that fray check and just kind of, you know, close it up that way to a little glue. A little glue never hurts. So my sewing chick, she's really cute. Now I want to make sure that her bottom, yep, she's all pushed out. I'm just, sometimes I self-doubt myself, but 
She's cute. She's cute. She's cute. Okay, so we're going to go back over here to the machine. And we're going to top stitch her. Top stitch her down. So, all right. I think I got you on the, the husky here. So, I am going to just um, sew it down. And I've got these little loose threads here. I think I should clip them before I get started because I don't want anything hanging out. I like everything to look nice and neat. So we'll just get rid of those. So it's probably the spot where I should have backstitched, but I didn't. So anything that's kind of loose, I'll tuck it in. And what I want to do is just really um, sew this down close to the edge and close up that little hole where we turned it without making it look obvious. Like I said, you want to keep things nice and neat. So I think that's good. And I'm just going to drop a couple back stitches in it just to make sure she's secure. And we'll just go around the whole thing. This just makes it look neat, makes it lie flat. And I'm kind of really kind of going close to the edge. You can use matching thread. I don't always use matching thread. It just depends on what I'm doing, if I'm doing any fancy sewing. But white thread, these are just coasters. Um, you can make them fancy or you can just keep them simple. But it's great when you have pretty fabrics and you can really, you know, make something fun with it. And these are just so stinking cute. I probably should put my uh, sewing advisor on a heavier um, fabric because I am sewing through batting and two layers of fabric and some extra fabric and with the beak and stuff. So here's my thread where I started from. I'm just going to trim that off just to get that out of the way because I don't want it to get sewed in when I get to the end. And when I get to the end, I should meet right back up and I do right where I started and just do a back stitch, oops, back stitch and a forward stitch and then cut it. And there we have it. She's all nicely top stitched down. I'm hoping that you can see how she looks. I'm going to get on and do the, do the second one. So I will have a little pair of um, sewing chicken or sewing chick coasters in my sewing room for me and my friends or um, my sister when she gets home. And um, we can put our drinks on our cute little sewing coasters. And I do have some other coasters in here that I have made in the past and they're just um, square coasters. And let me show you these because these are an idea that you can do. I have this little box here and I've had leftover little sewing fabrics. You can see there's like a half a mannequin in that one. And I had, I did like a little log cabin around it and just put some pretty bags, sewed an X on it. I sewed it twice around. These were really fun, um, just plain and simple that I did um, for my sewing room back years ago. Um, just, just love different little um, coasters, but these are all square. Let's have some little tea kettles on. This is what you can do with a lot of your scraps. Here's some with some coffee cups. You know, what I love about these um, cloth coasters, here's one with half square triangles, is that, you know, you can throw these anywhere, you know, on a dresser in your, I have one in my bathroom. You know, anywhere you wanna, you know, you have a drink and you wanna set something on, they're great. You don't have to worry about them breaking. Um, here, I even bought some of these at a, at a yard sale. I'm sure somebody made these. I didn't make these. But these are so great because you don't have to worry about anything. You know, if they get dirty, throw them in the washer. They're washable. They're cotton. They have batting in them. Um, here's some other ones that I made years ago. These were in my bedroom originally. I just applique these little coffee cups on them. And I had one on Jim and one on my uh, nightstands. And now I have two little white chickens and they have like some colored dots on them and they're just really cute. And I thought, oh my God, they're just so cute for a farmhouse. So I just, 
I just love stuff like this. It's very simple and easy to do. So um, if you like my little chicken coaster idea, um, I will have um, the ones that I showed you earlier on my Etsy store, Farmhouse by Marnay. <laughs> They're great. They're fun. And I hope you, you um, try out these things and, and make a few. And I would love to see what you make. I am on um, Twitter now. Jim has been great about hooking up with, you know, trying to get us out there with Twitter. I'm not a Twitter, but he said I should tweet about everything. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. We have a um, um, Facebook page, uh, Country Farmhouse Quilting, or I think it's Country Quilting, but you can find us under Country Farmhouse Quilting, so you can check that out. I do a lot of my makes on there, a lot of our quilts, our quilt videos, and I know I've been doing a lot of quilt videos. And I really think that it's time for some fun things, but I do have a lot of things to share. Um, I'm working on some grocery totes. Um, I want to do a binding tutorial, a binding tutorial on how I do the rollover binding, which is really simple because I know a lot of people out there are afraid to sew or start quilting. And, and believe me, get quilting and do it, you know, and don't be afraid of what your fabric or your, you know, or you're going to mess up because it's a journey and everybody starts somewhere, you know, and it just takes, it just takes practice, you know, play with your fabrics. Little fabrics like this are great practice to, to do, you know, to make some fun things, you know, so just, just have fun with it, you know, and check us out. Um, like I said, Twitter, uh, Facebook, I am on Instagram, um, Broken Wing Sewing Creator. Uh, I don't know. Jim might change that for me. <laughs> He's real big on it. We're, we are working on a web page for our quilting business. So anybody that's interested in mailing in a quilt, um, you can email us at countryfarmhousequilting at gmail.com. Or if you just want to reach out, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment. I'm, I, like I said, I would really love to see what you guys make, you know, or if you tried it or you like it or you know what you want to see i mean to me i'm just having fun with this this has been great and check out my video of my giveaway i'm giving away a hundred dollar gift card from the fabric candy shop um for all of my subscribers so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and check out that video and get your name in for the drawing um i don't have the date <laughs> shame on me but anyway the drawing it's it's all on my on my on my um uh, video um uh, page where um, I'm doing the giveaway subscriber appreciation giveaway check out that video and please subscribe okay and I will get back at you soon all right have a great night bye